Robertson eventually elected on the long throw. Easy clearance by Moen. Now Co back to goal. McMahon. Well, he hasn't scored for Swindon Town. That would have been uh, quite a way to mark your return to the side. Don't think he quite caught it flushly. And uh, keeper always in control as the ball skidded wide of the upright. Here's O'Brien for Bradford. Jacobs hugging the left touchline. Now Waddle, who sort of flits in field from his right wing position. Oh, he's heading back for the flanks now. Finds Hamilton. Lovely back heel. Here's Hamilton again. Chance for Watson, who missed his kick. Jacobs, and Jacobs has scored for Bradford City. 15 minutes on the clock, and almost Bradford's first attack of the game produces a goal. An unlikely source, really. It's the fullback, Wayne Jacobs, who's got it after a complete miss kick by Gordon Watson, but he won't mind that because his new team, Bradford City, have the lead. Allison makes himself available. Closed down by O'Brien. Really strong play by the Swindon man. Leach turns nicely, Scott Leach, and is it turned home? That's an excellent save. Horlock, who slid in and seemed to have diverted it goalwards, but a super dive away to his left-hand side by Mark Schwarzer, and he clutched the ball as it seemed destined for the corner. Waddle, who's uh, seeing quite a bit of the ball, perhaps too much for Swindon's liking, looks for Duxbury. Angled across the goalkeeper, wide of the post, and another let-off for Swindon Town. Excellent. Of course, Ian Culverhouse stretched it off in the opening minutes of the game, so there'll be a fair bit to be added on by the referee. Swindon, of course, striving for the equaliser before the break. Here's Drysdale's cross. Horlock makes it. It was a fair chance, and he's annoyed he didn't keep the ball down. That's what he does well, Kevin Horlock, bursts through from midfield, unmarked, and really annoyed with himself that he didn't hit the target. Pinto loses out to Leach, looking first time for Allison. On his own, the Swindon man shrugs off O'Brien, still Allison, good effort and a good save. Really strong play again by Allison. He had nobody with him, he had to go alone. Held off the challenge, fired in the shot, and at least made Mark Schwarzer make the save. Free kick. Driven forward towards Allison. Sass was there first. The expense of a throw in. away from Hamilton, gets the cross in, Horlock's header, superb goal, Kevin Horlock, his seventh of the season, and Swindon Town have the perfect start to the second half. The fans who were displeased with the first half, really getting into the swing of it now, so too Horlock, his seventh of the season, and a header which gave the keeper no chance at all. Beautifully picked out by Steve Coe, Keeper may have got a touch, certainly hit the upright, but no way it was staying out. And it's back all square at 1-1. Robinson being encouraged to move forward in this right wing-back position. Cuts in field, away from Jacobs, feeds Allison. And marked tightly by O'Brien, still Allison has it. Support from Coe. Now McMahon. Now Drysdale has room left side, good chance for Swindon, Horlock's header, flashed wide. Real chance, Horlock can't believe that's not his second and Swindon's second. A superb move, it only needed the faintest of touches and Horlock couldn't quite get enough on the ball to divert it home. Here's Coe, Steve Coe, left foot drive. Disappointing finish 
from what was a promising chance. Pretty direct attack by Swindon. Digby, Allison, and then Co. Almost Wimbledon-esque, but uh, not quite the right result. A useful ball by Jacobs finds Steiner. Now Jacobs has continued his run, beautifully found. Wayne Jacobs looking for his second goal. Good save by Digby. And the young fullback very nearly punishing Swindon Town for a second time. Digby plunging low to his left, makes a fine stop. Tackle was late by Horlock, who acknowledges the fact. Credit to Hamilton, who is quickly back on his feet. Don't want to make too much of it. And here he is with the header, away by Kerslake. Suddenly it's Bradford City who've... Uh, just got into the ascendancy a little bit. Jacobs is there again, and another brilliant save by Digby. And he's annoyed with his defence. That's twice Jacobs has been allowed to get in on the goalkeeper, and twice Digby has saved his side from going behind again. Allison on the chest this time. Holds it up nicely, finds McMahon. McMahon's drive straight at the keeper. Been shy to have a go at goal today, Steve McMahon. And it's end-to-end uh, -end stuff for the moment. Highly entertaining. Robinson's pass is too short. Seized upon by Dreyer. Has Steiner left side, Watson right. Dreyer goes alone. And once again, he's thwarted by Digby. Good job for Swindon that their goalkeeper's alert in this half. And takes over. This is about where he scored from the other day. And blocked this time. Robinson. Swindon finishing strong. Allison looping a header in and just over the top. You could see uh, what Wayne Allison was thinking there. Just trying to float it over the top of the big goalkeeper. Just got too much purchase on it. reacted quickly feeds Steiner shakes off one challenge and again it was another fine save by Digby which leaves a Bradford player beating the ground in frustration this time low to his right that may just have been creeping in certainly needed the fingertip save Final whistle is blown by Mr Leach. Both sides wanted a win today, neither's managed it. It's ended in a draw, an enterprising one at that, an improved second-half show by Swindon. Goal scored by Kevin Horlock after 47 minutes to cancel out Wayne Jacobs, 15th-minute opener for Bradford. But Swindon were indebted to their goalkeeper for a couple of good saves in the second half, one of whom was from Jacobs again. Just managed to keep Bradford out, and it finished. Final score here at the county ground, Swindon Town 1, Bradford City 1. I think I counted three good saves second half. Uh, Any one particularly special from your point of view? No, I, think I was more, more happy with it with the final one where uh, you know it was, it was getting late on and the lad was just dragging it and dragging it. I thought he's not going to get a shot in here. And then he pulls a little shot in, and uh, I thought he was going wild, actually. And I thought, oh, no, and I've gone down and got a hand, and uh, luckily it's gone the right side of the post. Good enough to get a point, which which could be vital come the end of the season. Yeah, that's right. Well, Russell, Swindon Town, they're like Bristol Rovers, failing to take maximum points from their home matches. Yeah, they are at the moment. Uh, they looked a bit at sixes and sevens at the back. I know they've got to push on and uh, try and get another goal there, but they did uh, they did expose Digby a little bit at the back there. Having said that, I mean, they were a goal down early on. They did come back well in the second half. Kevin Horlock got the goal and he was perhaps their man of the match. Yeah, Certainly yeah. as an outfield player. Yeah, he could have had another one as well. He leaves his room very late coming into the box here. His timing for that was magnificent. Of course, he's managed to lose his markers in midfield and he's also got between the markers in the box. Comes in, comes in on pace, bit of pace on the ball and the keeper hardly sees it then. 
Now, Bradford City coming to the county ground were in the relegation zone. They didn't yeah. look a bad side, and I mean, they certainly tested the home goalkeeper, didn't they? No, they looked quite good, you know, and they looked full of confidence, and they played a bit, and they did. They gave, they gave uh, Fraser plenty to do. I mean, you're looking at him, and all, all afternoon it looks like he's got his angles right. Good save there, good save there again. And they're not easy saves. Not only has he got a. He's got to save the, the ball from going in the net. He can't palm it out back out to anybody. This, as he said, was probably his best. Late in the game, again, his angles are superb there. He's got to deal with stuff that's uh, reachable down that side, and he's put it away for a corner. So while some people might look at it as two points lost, in a sense, at least it was one protected by the goalkeeper almost for them. Yeah, but Fraser's done his job today. You know, Steve will turn around and say, well, that's what you're there for, you've got to make those saves. Now, important for Swindon, they don't get embroiled in anything at the bottom of the table. I think they play Grimsby at home next week in that rearranged game, and they do need three points from that. Yeah, they need three points from there, and uh, it'll, it'll be vital to them. You know, that'll jump them up the league, hopefully, a bit, and uh, give them a bit of confidence. That's what they need at the moment. Yeah. Important game for both teams. Swindon Town have uh, only played here twice in the last couple of uh, last nine league games, so they've forgotten a little bit uh, how to play here. The last time was against Grimsby, and it was only for half an hour after the referee probably wisely should have started it, but uh, unwisely then decided not to play on after half an hour. So here we are, a dull January afternoon, but. The team strengthened by our new signing, the number 10 there, just warming up. Gordon Watson, the club record signing, 550,000 for Southampton. The signing made in time to, to play for him today. But unfortunately, uh, he can't be a member of the, the cup side next week at Everton, so I'm sure Gordon will want to resurrect his, uh, his uh, league status once again. He's had rather a sad time at Southampton, only managed seven appearances in the 19 game at Southampton this so far he's been 12 times so so rather disappointing not scored so I'm sure Gordon will be there all out to to prove that the the money has been well spent Sass to Hamilton Hamilton under pressure from Allison managed to get the ball forward but there's Steve McMahon now with the first touch, sends the ball round the prospects to the number two, which is David Kerslake, who's playing his, his last game of his long period from, from Spurs. But uh, Dave, well, it's uh, when he wants on, the ball headed away by Moore, picked up by Scott Leach. Cow now back to McMahon as a strike. Well, what? Wide of the target by the keeper, but a good effort from Steve McMahon. I'm sure he'll be glad to feel now that he's uh, involved in most moves in the Bradford half. That, uh, that shot wouldn't make Steve too glad with his efforts. Try his skills in the higher division. Hamilton now not being hurried with his throw to Moen. Moen chips it forward to shut. Unlucky. Waddle now. Wide for Andrew O'Brien into the uh, enemy territory. Jacobs now back to Waddle in the centre circle. Waddle now switching the point of attack to this side. That man comes through, but. Good play by uh, Duxbury. Chance for. Chance for Jacobs! Yes! Jacobs! Over now, 1 0 to Bradford. And uh, that was a good sweeping move. Starting on the far side. Waddle. Waddle took it on on this side. Got a ball through. Neat play by Duxbury. And there was Jacobs as the, uh, the lads do a dance. Uh, actually, Gordon Watson buffed his, his shot. But there was Jacobs. Well, there was two there that could have finished off. But Jacobs drilled it into the uh, left hand corner of Fraser Digsby's goal to make it 1 0. To Bradford City, that's uh, Wayne's second goal of the season. He scored the first away goal of our first division career this season at Port Vale with that stunning free kick. McMahon comes across for it. First early ball in. Whoa, and that was just got away by Des Hamilton. And it's a throw in on this near side. Allison. 
Allison again being challenged by O'Brien. Duxbury comes in. And uh, Mrs. Toms waves the way of Swindon. Good turn by Leach. Oh, wow. That ball was, that attempted shot was going nowhere, but uh, in came Kevin Orlock, got a side foot to it. Um, a bit more power might have had Mark Swarza really grasping, but uh, the keeper did well in the end. But thankfully, Kevin Orlock really didn't get full power behind it. But uh, O'Brien back to his keeper. And a volley up in the air by Swarza towards Hamilton. Going to be taken by Lee Duxbury, right by that far corner flag. Wobble. Oh, and that's cut out by Kerslake. Hammered forward. But Mowen deals with it. Pinto loses out to Horlock. Neat little playoff now for Horlock again. Through ball for Allison. And that was good play by Wayne Allison. Once again, used his strength. But there was no strength in the shot, and it was easily gathered by Mark Swarzer. Kerslake. And uh, swimming players find it, find it hard to get away from the Bradford defence as O'Brien gets the foot in, but it's uh, Robinson on the far side, back to his captain. Tips it forward. And that's Sass knocking it upfield towards Shutt. Pulls it down, does well. Hamilton cut out by uh, Horlock, but shot to one now. Bradford pouring forward. This is better. Through ball for Duxbury. Duxbury. Oh, lucky! I don't think that was a shot. I think he was generally trying to pull it back for Hamilton as Hamilton crisscrossed away from him. But that was another tremendous break by Bradford, almost rewarded. So far, Steve McMahon as Swindon driving forward. This is Kerslake coming away from his defensive. Position Drysdale now knocks the ball in. All up, but uh, Zeda high over the bar. It uh, came. Marco Sass did a good job there, just coming across him. I don't know what the referee's saying to him there, but uh, I think Marco Sass just did enough there to put Kevin Horlock off. He's got one more throw for his pound. Pinto loses out to Leach. Ball driven forward. Allison on his chest, Allison again getting through, standing through, and well spotted by the keeper, well Allison there showed his pace, his strength, ignoring the challenge of Andrew O'Brien, but uh, his shot wasn't good enough to beat Mark Swarz, who took it low to his left, ball pushed through, the full back by Waddle, inside, Ooh, chance for Pinto now, tried the first time shot, well, it was worth the effort. Once again, the, uh, the magician Merlin threaded that ball through the fullback. McMahon gives the ball away. Watson stretches, but uh, Torlock playing the ball to Kerslake. Kerslake towards Carr, but Moore covers it well. Sass hammers the ball forward, but that'll go. Oh, well then. Digby <laughs> went over his head, he got a little bit of a nudge off shot. And uh, certainly had one or two hearts racing from the home crowd. But uh, the keeper had it covered all the way. And it's in the hand of Carl Shutt. Sass underneath it does well. Back pedalling, but he manages to head the ball into touch. And it's Drysdale on the far side to take the throw. Cow. Trying to get away from Hamilton, does do. Swings the ball in. Oh dear. Early goal. Two minutes of the game gone. Kevin Orlock. The ball given away on the far side. A good cross from uh, Steve Cow. And that's Kevin Orlock. Getting his seventh goal of the season to make it 1 1. Two minutes 
of the game, gone to this half, and that's a bad blow for the Bantams as the Robins strike back. Pinto keeps it in. Watson on the near post. Turns! Oof, it's a side netting. Well, that's the danger of the man, but he's back to goal. Swung round, but unfortunately couldn't get direction. The power was there. Thugs into the side netting, almost an instant reply to that to shaker from Swindon. Swings it in. And it's punched away by Fraser. And that's flipped back by Waddle. Knocked in by McMahon. Shot with a header. Good header, good powerful header from Carl Shudd, unfortunately. Couldn't get it down, so goes over the bar, but good effort from Carl Shutt. He says Swindon only lost three times last season and was only beaten here by Shrewsbury. This season so far they've been beaten three times at home. Portsmouth 1-0, Wolves 2-1 and West Brom 3-2. Two draws, Port Vale and Bolton. As once again, Swindon going forward. Robinson now taking on Jacobs, finding Allison. Allison being tracked all the way by O'Brien. To Cow. Back to McMahon. Oh, well left, a chance here now for Swindon. Oh, there was that diving in. And that was that man, Kevin Horlock again, almost getting on the end of that left. Left wing cross, diving in, and his glancing header just wide of Mark Swartz's left hand post. Good break there, which had uh, the referee side struggled a little bit and uh, down the line for Allison. Hold it off O'Brien. Turns. Robinson now gets the ball in. It's a deep cross. And it's kept in by. Uh, Drysdale on that far side, Swindon pushing forward again, it's Kerslake now. Tries the shot, well, he saw the opportunity, had a goal, but wide of the target. I think that Mark Swarz had it covered. And anyway, what should have been a corner for Bradford, turned out to be a free kick for Swindon. That ball, diagonal ball. Well seen by Moore. O'Brien gets a foot to it. Steiner now to Waddle. Tremendous ball by Waddle, measured. Oh, good effort by Jacobs, well spotted by Digby. That almost got through. But, uh, tremendous strike by Wayne Jacobs. Digby getting down to his left, saw the danger, dealt with it well. Bradford. Hamilton truly brought down by Kevin Horlock. And a kick quickly chained to uh, Jacobs. Hamilton. Back to uh, Waddle. Waddle now. Swings it in. Oh, good save, a marvellous save. That's Digby robbing Jacobs once again. That ball picking out Jacobs, bravely going in. Digby stretching to his left, pushing it away for a corner. Tremendous effort and a marvellous save by the keeper. Twice he's robbed Jacobs in the last couple of minutes from goal bound efforts. Took a knock on the neck for his, uh, for his efforts there, his bravery. But Digby, after me saying that neither keeper has been seriously tested, Digby has had to really show his, his skill in the last couple of minutes. Now oh, that's another corner, and Swindon under pressure at the moment. We're just over a quarter an hour of this game left. I think that whoever scores the next goal will win it. Jacobs swings it in. Oh, cleared off the line from Steiner. Another effort dealt with. Moen back to Sass, and it's Bradford keeping the pressure on now for Jacobs, but uh, Swindon under pressure, and that was a, a goal line clearance, I think, by Kerslake.
header by Elkins. Duxby underneath it wins the header. Watson. O'Brien plays it forward. Duxbury. Watson chips it forward for Steiner, but too wide, too far away from the, the plane. It's a quick throw out by Bigby. Getting uh, O'Sullivan away. Challenged by Dreyer. Got Dreyer with him. Dreyer forcing him across. Watson now. Watson tries a shot. Uh, bravely blocked by Duxbury. Robinson comes inside. Knocks it to the far post. Allison, well, the first chance he's had at goal. He got away from uh, O'Brien to get his header in. But it was too high. And uh, again, a good break by Swindon. A good cross, and there was Wayne Allison, the uh, leading scorer. Swarzy with the kick. Watson reacts quicker than anybody. Steiner now. Steiner bursting into the area. Tries a shot. And it was a good save by the keeper. A brilliant save by Digby. And good work from Robert Steiner, the big, the big Swede. Using his strength, using his skill and getting his shot in. And Digby got down well to his uh, right-hand post. And pushed it away for a corner. That could have just sneaked in and what a winner that would have been. Well, when he scored one, but it so easily could have been a hat-trick. Yeah, that's right. I've had three, three chances today and one of them's gone in, so I was delighted one went in, but it would have been nice, obviously, to have finished another and maybe it would have been the winner. Now, what was the difference between the first-half performance and second-half performance? Because I thought we played really well first-half. Second-half, we went a little bit astray, didn't we? Yeah, first-half, uh, like you say, we contained them well. I think second-half, obviously, their, their gaff has changed a few things and he's must have told them to look to play a bit more from the back and it uh, seemed to cause a problem, the sweeper getting out, but... Uh, we knew they would come at us, they're their own team, and you've got to expect that. Um, the disappointing thing was that to concede so early, it, they all grow in confidence and stature, whereas, you know, away from home, if we could have kept them quiet for another 15 minutes, maybe riled the fans a little bit, their players' confidence sinks a bit, and we'd probably go on to win it comfortably, but unfortunately it didn't happen that way. Are you disappointed? Yeah, we are, because obviously one nil up and at half-time there was a, such a feeling in the dressing room that, you know, not only would we hold on, but maybe nick another goal and go on to win comfortably. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, it's not worked out that way. We've come out and, again, we've, you know, we've got a sloppy goal away from a throw-in. And it's just so disappointing, really. Now, can you describe your goal? Uh, not really. I, can, <laughs> I, can, I just remember thinking to myself, get in the box, you know, make the numbers up in the box and something might come down to you. I think Des has crossed it. Gordon Watson's had a swing at it and missed it. <laughs> and that's, that, though, yeah, it? <laughs> and that's, that's wrong footed there, lad. And I just remember pulling the ball onto my left foot and... Just seeing the goal and thinking, if I get a good contact, you know, it's going to go in, and it did. We created a lot of chances in the whole game. We always felt today that we would. Um, I'm disappointed in the first 30 minutes of the second half, um, basically because we lost our way slightly. Um, they shouldn't have been allowed back into the game after the first 45 minutes. Um, but we made basic errors, um, people trying to run with the ball, people trying to knock um, worldy passes, when they should have just been playing simple passes. So that was slightly disappointing, but the game was there for the taking today and creating as many chances as that away from home you should win. The first half performance was a good performance as well. Everything went right, didn't it, Chris? Yeah, like, you know, I know I keep saying it, I'm not blowing my own trumpet, I'm not blowing my team's trumpet, but there isn't a better football inside when we play like that in the first half in this division. Um, what we need to do is finish teams off. And sadly, once again, I'm you know, saying that again. Now, what can you say about Gordon Watson's performance today? I was delighted with his performance. I thought he worked very, very hard. Most of the chances that were created didn't fall to Gordon. Um, the only one I thought I would have thought, he could have hooked one over his head in the box. And then uh, John Dreyer came through and um, hit a nice right foot shot, which I thought he might have passed to Gordon um, as the defender came across. But he's pulled a good save out of the goalkeeper, so I suppose I can't complain.